I'm Jeremy Scahill coming to you from the offices of The Intercept in New York City, and this is episode 80 of Intercepted. President Trump has taken decisive action over the last two years to bring sanctions on officials in the Maduro regime. We've isolated uh, the regime economically and diplomatically. And today, uh, freedom broke out in Venezuela. Right now, the Trump administration is openly engaging in a blatant effort to overthrow the government of Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela. It is a campaign aimed at regime change, and it's being promoted openly as an opportunity to steal Venezuelan oil for the benefit of U.S. corporations. They're not even pretending. Here's National Security Advisor John Bolton on Fox News. I think we're trying to get to the same end result here. You know, uh, Venezuela is one of the three countries I call the troika of tyranny. It'll make a big difference to the United States economically if we could have American oil companies really invest in and, and produce the oil uh, capabilities in uh, Venezuela. It'd be good. But this is not some insane Twitter thought spewed by Trump after guzzling down gallons of Fox and Friends. It's an open imperialism that is being embraced not just by Republicans and Trump supporters, but by powerful Democrats as well. Amid protests against Maduro last week, the head of the opposition in Venezuela, Juan Guaido, declared himself the legitimate president of Venezuela during a protest last Wednesday. That move was immediately backed by the United States, and the Trump administration recognized Guaido as the president. Maduro rejected Guaido's claim and accused the U.S. of attempting a coup d'etat. Immediately, he ordered U.S. diplomats to leave the country, but Maduro has since walked that back while maintaining the position that the U.S. should stay out of Venezuela's affairs. Donald Trump hunts Venezuela. This push for regime change in Venezuela did not appear in a vacuum. The CIA has been plotting with so-called rebels in Venezuela from the early days of the Trump administration. Trump administration discussed a coup with rebel Venezuelan officers. American officials are telling The Times that the administration indeed held secret meetings with rebellious military officers to discuss plans to overthrow President Nicolas Maduro. And now, with the media focus on the shutdown and Trump's atrocious wall plan, it appears to have been put on the fast track. Nicolas Maduro was sworn in for a second six-year term earlier this month. The right-wing opposition took the opportunity to renew protests after the last major anti-government protests were suppressed by security forces back in 2017. So on the eve of a major demonstration against Maduro's new term this year, according to the Wall Street Journal, Vice President Mike Pence called Guaido to tell him that should he challenge Maduro for the presidency, that the U.S. would support him. And that's exactly what happened. All across the so-called liberal media, the reporting and analysis on Venezuela these past weeks has been atrocious. And actually, it's been this way for a long time. We should remember that the New York Times actually openly supported the 2002 coup against Hugo Chavez. But in the wake of recent Venezuelan elections, there's been a total uniformity to the characterization of Venezuela's suffering and chaos as the sole fault of Nicolas Maduro. The elections are being denounced by anchors as though it's just accepted fact that Maduro is only president because of corruption almost never mentioned prominently, is the fact that Venezuela has been systematically targeted by the United States and its allies and its puppets in Latin America, or the impact that economic sanctions have had on the country, or the fact that there was an attempt to kill Nicolas Maduro with a drone packed with explosives. The story is just Maduro is a corrupt socialist dictator. He needs to be taken out so that Venezuela can be free. The central role that the U.S. has played under Bush, under Obama, and now under Trump in destabilizing Venezuela, it's just an afterthought, if it's even mentioned at all. One of MSNBC's favorite conservatives, Hugh Hewitt, even suggested last weekend on Meet the Press that overthrowing Maduro could bring a kumbaya moment for liberals 
and Donald Trump. And it is far more important to shut down the Maduro government than our government. And I think Donald Trump is leading there and he is winning there because of Bolton and Pompeo going down to see Bolsonaro and and Duque. It's that's going to happen. That's going to bring us together. Now, Hugh Hewitt, of course, is up to his neck and crazy. But if he was just talking about the political elite uniting behind Trump to overthrow the government of Venezuela, then he probably has a point. Senate Minority Whip Dick Durbin, a powerful Democrat from Illinois, released a statement praising Trump for, quote, appropriately recognizing Guaido. House Intelligence Committee Chair Adam Schiff said Trump was right to recognize Guaido as president. And then there was this insane propaganda video released by some Democrats on the Foreign Relations Committee. They included Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Elliot Engel, and the former Clinton Health and Human Services Secretary Donna Shalala. They declared, quote, we refuse to recognize the legitimacy of Maduro's presidency. Maduro's administration held fraudulent elections and he has lost his mandate. We cannot allow Nicolas Maduro to destroy his country, to continue to steamroll democracy and act with impunity. If all of that is not cringeworthy enough, let's look at the man appointed to spearhead this bipartisan Venezuela policy. Today, I am uh, incredibly excited to announce that a seasoned, principled, and tough-minded foreign policy veteran is joining our State Department team. Elliot Abrams is coming aboard to lead our efforts on Venezuela. Elliot Abrams is a notorious neoconservative and was actually a so-called never-Trumper who penned op-eds opposing Donald Trump. Well, clearly a good old-fashioned coup d'etat mission was too juicy for Abrams to pass up. Very briefly, um, I left this building 30 years ago this week, last time I worked here. So it's um, very nice to be back. Let's be clear here. Elliot Abrams is an unrepentant war criminal. He played a central role in the mass slaughter of tens of thousands of people across Central and Latin America in the dirty wars of the 1980s. He was a player in the Iran-Contra scandal. But we're told Abrams is an adult. Abrams is an old Latin America hand. It's sickening. This administration brought in Abrams because of his immorality and his willingness to support mass murder. It's the only reason he's there. And no one with even a flimsy grasp of morality should be welcoming his appointment as special envoy on Venezuela. And let's remember that in 2002, during the Bush-Cheney administration, Abrams was a major proponent of the coup against Hugo Chavez, But even some Democrats have praised the Abrams appointment. Among those was former Clinton ambassador to the U.N. and former energy secretary Bill Richardson. He said that the Trump administration was, quote, smart to bring in Abrams, saying, and I'm quoting here, this is good. And they're bringing sort of the moderate Republican Bush foreign policy advisors in. Elliot Abrams, a moderate? That's that's just nuts. On Fox News, Bill Richardson also praised Trump for recognizing the Guaido administration. You know I'm not a big fan of the president's foreign policy, but on this issue, it was a bold move what they did, recognizing uh, the the assembly leader. As Donald Trump has cozied up to strongmen and dictators across the globe, from Vladimir Putin to Mohammed bin Salman, Rodrigo Duterte, Kim Jong-un, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi of Egypt, it seems that he's found the one so-called strong man that he just can't tolerate. And that leader, the leader of Venezuela, happens to have the largest oil reserves in the world. Well, we're looking at Venezuela. It's a very sad situation. Uh, that was the richest state in all of that area. That's a big, beautiful area and by far the richest. And now it's uh, one of the poorest places in the world. That's what socialism gets you. We've heard this justification for intervention, for coups, for war, for sanctions from the United States throughout history. The United States needs to go and free the people from their undemocratic leaders. It's all a huge rescue mission for those poor people who are going to be so happy when the United States comes to liberate them. It's all a big lie. This week, the Trump administration announced that it had imposed new sanctions against Venezuela's state-owned oil company. And the State Department said that it was taking action to make sure that all of the money and other assets owned by Venezuela in the U.S. and elsewhere around the world would be handed over to the control of the U.S.-backed puppet Guaido. 
Buried within a New York Times report on the sanctions on Tuesday is this tidbit. The sanctions included exceptions to allow the American oil company Chevron, along with Dick Cheney's former company Halliburton, to continue working in Venezuela. That tells you everything you need to know about what's happening right now.